seeing pictures of the presidents or political parties. Uh, it's, uh, it's an effort not to inflame people. Important to note, again, that this is not a political situation. It may have been a political act, but it is not a reflection necessarily on political parties. This is perhaps a lone wolf, perhaps a man with an axe to grind, and very likely a man with mental problems as well. And I, I hate to speculate on that, but if you think about the fact that you would send uh, these weapons, the, this, these pipe bombs, uh, even if they were not able to be detonated, and, and that is still open to, I think, some interpretation and some analysis, and the FBI will hopefully say more on that today. But the fact is, uh, it's a very, very uh, frightening, terrorizing act to send these to personal uh, homes around the country of famous individuals. There is that connection that if you look, most of these, if not all these individuals, do have a connection to the Democratic Party. Many are, are high-profile critics of Donald F Trump. That is not a reflection on the president right now. It's a reflection on the person who is sending out or allegedly is sending out these pipe bombs and the targets of those explosives. But now I, I think it becomes a clear picture now why they're trying to make sure there aren't myriad pictures of those uh, of the van itself and the stickers on that van. Mark and Tiffany, I'll send it back to you for now. Again, the FBI is inside the AutoZone. We're right outside. Absolutely. You make very good points there, Todd. And we'll check back in with you, uh, Todd McDermott, who is outside the AutoZone in Plantation, where that van was confiscated earlier today. We want to go live now to the East Room of the White House this afternoon. President Donald Trump is about to speak. We understand he's just gone to the podium. We want to listen in. He's going to be speaking on this latest suspect. What a great honor to have you. Thank you. It is a great, great honor to have you in the White House. Thank you very much. They call this, as you know, this is young black leadership, and it's the summit. And to have you here is truly uh, my privilege. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk. We're going to meet. But, but before, before I do, I'd like to begin and you are leaders. That's a, you're real leaders. I'd like to begin today's remarks by providing an update on the packages and devices that have been mailed to high-profile figures throughout our country and a media organization. I am pleased to inform you that law enforcement has apprehended the suspect and taken him into custody. It's an incredible job by law enforcement. We've carried out a far-reaching federal, state, and local investigation to find the person or persons responsible for these events. These terrorizing acts are despicable and have no place in our country. No place. I've instructed authorities to spare no resource or expense in finding those responsible and bringing them to swift and certain justice. And we will prosecute them, him, her, whoever it may be, to the fullest extent of the law. We must never allow political violence to take root in America. Cannot let it happen. And I'm committed to doing everything in my power as president to stop it. And to stop it now. To stop it now. I have just concluded a briefing with the Department of Justice following the apprehension of the suspect. I want to applaud the FBI, Secret Service, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, the NYPD, and all law enforcement throughout the entire country, incredible partners. These people have worked so hard, and to have done it so quickly, it's looking like a, uh, you're looking, it's a needle in a haystack. How do you do this so quickly? They've done an incredible, incredible job, and I want to congratulate them. <laughs> But a bottom line is that Americans must unify, and we must show the world that we are united together in peace and love and harmony as fellow American citizens. There is no country like our country, and every day we are showing 
the world just how truly great we are. So you are really very special people. I wanted to say that before our little talk. And uh, I appreciate the time you've given me. And boy, one, one day, one of you is going to be standing. It could be three or four of you, actually. But you're going to be standing right here. You're going to be standing right here. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Who, who in this room, who in this room wants to be president someday? So it's an ambitious group. It's an ambitious group. That's great. Anyway, thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. For the media, thank you very much. Uh, I thought I'd do that. And uh, we feel very strongly. Uh, again, congratulations to all law enforcement. We have the best in the world, and they just showed it. Thank you very much. Now to the subject at hand. If you're listening to President Donald Trump speaking this afternoon, he's uh, speaking at the White House to uh, the Young Black Leadership Summit that's being held there. Of course, he uh, put his planned comments aside for just a moment to touch on the fact that we do have a suspect uh, in this male pipe bomb investigation. We want to go now to a photograph. This will be the first time that we are seeing the suspect in this case. We know uh, this is the man that has uh, been taken into custody, 56-year-old Cesar Cesar. Uh, Junior Todd McDermott confirming that for us uh, a short time ago through his sources. Uh, we know that uh, Sayak Jr. Uh, has been arrested before, not only here in Palm Beach County, but there was another arrest in Hollywood back in 2014. He was arrested for stealing copper piping, and we're now being told that the FBI had his fingerprints in the system uh, from his arrest for stealing from a Walmart um, in Miami-Dade County. And also, we learned, right, he was arrested, and that was back in 2002, and that was on a, a bomb threat charge as well. So clearly, uh, this is a suspect that has a past record of some sort. Uh, we want to go back now to Todd McDermott, uh, who is outside that auto zone where we uh, know that that van was confiscated earlier today. And Todd, I'm not sure if you heard the president, uh, but he uh, was there talking uh, in the East Room of the White House, and he said that these acts are despicable and have no place in our country, and we must never allow political violence to take root in America. Todd? All right, Tiffany, thank you. Yes, I did hear the president. The word despicable will uh, will ring throughout the day and evening, obviously, and it, it, clearly it is a despicable act. I have a couple more confirmations for you. Again, uh, information is coming out slowly. We now know that Cesar Sayak Jr. was shopping in the auto zone. He was doing business today. Now, you heard uh, Ted White earlier say that the FBI is actually going through the AutoZone's records, their computer records. I did tell you that uh, Seahawk Jr. was tracked by his cell phone. AutoZone actually keeps track of their customers through their cell phone. You can walk into an AutoZone store, not even tell them your name, tell them your cell phone number if you've done business here before and given the number. They punch in your number, your file comes up. They're looking to see what he might have purchased here. He was here this morning. His van was here. He apparently had been here before. He was doing business. I, I don't know if he made it to the cash register or not today. And again, we've confirmed they're looking again at the surveillance video from the cameras uh, outside and inside the store. But we do know he was arrested right here, and that van was taken away. You've seen the video. We can show the video again of the van being taken. Uh, as Tiffany mentioned, it is covered in political stickers. Uh, one irony is that uh, CNN stickers are seen on it. Obviously, CNN was a, a target of one of these pipe bombs. Uh, and, and just to clarify, if you, if you haven't read it already, former CIA director John Brennan, a very fierce critic of the president, uh, was the addressee to, uh, of, on that pipe bomb that was sent to CNN, which made no sense. John Brennan does not work at CNN. He is actually um, a commentator for MSNBC and NBC. At the same time, we know that last night, the um, 
There were areas of Time Warner Center at Columbus Circle in New York City were evacuated. That's the New York headquarters of CNN, of course. Uh, the second time there's been a scare and an evacuation there, that turned out to be a false alarm. We also know that former Director of National Intelligence, DNI, Director James Clapper, also another big critic of the President of the United States, uh, had one of these packages addressed to him. That was intercepted in New York. I believe the number now is a dozen, a dozen pipe bombs. One of the keys to this investigation now will be how many more may be out there. We know they were crudely made. There is uh, still a lot of information to come on how effective they would have been. Could they have been detonated? Were they meant to scare? Were they meant to maim and kill? Either way, the, the crime is virtually the same. Uh, there is some question about whether there is a detonation device, um, a blast cap or such, on the pipe bombs that would have set it off. But if they were unstable at all and there was actually black powder in those PVC pipes, that alone could have not only killed a recipient or severely injured them, it could have hurt any anybody with the U.S. mail service who handled that or anyone else who handled the mail in a mail room uh, for the offices of many of these people. Again, most of these people being high profile had their mail screened. Uh, that may have provided some protection in this case, but there's a lot more information to come. Uh, we are all looking forward to that 2.30 news conference. It, I believe that the president had another event going on in the East Room today. That's why what you heard were cheers as if it was a rally. Um, there was some celebration that this person had been caught, that our federal investigators had done their job, and now we're again still waiting to see if there might be a connection to someone else. But if you've seen the pictures of these packages, they are crudely done manila envelopes with some bubble wrap, and uh, the pipe bombs themselves have some markings on them, some very distinctive markings, including a, a, a faux ISIS flag in some of them, some, some markings, some words, etc. The key to this case will be whether this person, this suspect, can be connected to those pipe bombs directly because his fingerprints are on something. And again, those were crude devices, but there were a lot of moving parts in the devices. And of course, there's the sealing of the envelopes. I thought another key was that there were stamps, U.S. stamps, used to actually send the packages. I don't know if those were sticker stamps. I don't know if there's saliva on those stamps, but that'll be part of the investigation for the FBI as they nail down Cesar Sayak Jr.'s connection to this. If you're just joining us, he's in his 50s. He was arrested here on State Road 7 in plantation in this AutoZone store today. His van was taken away. As Tiffany mentioned, we believe that's at the FBI facility at Miramar. I can almost guarantee that's where it is, and it won't be within our eyesight once again there. We do have those aerials showing it on its way. And again, that van was covered in political stickers. Some of them are of a highly sensitive nature. That's part of the reason why the FBI tried to cover it with a tarp as it was taken down the road. There'll be much more of this to come. And now, once this information comes out, there will be all kinds of figure pointing and accusations. It's important to note this man, as far as we know, at this point does not have a direct connection to either the RNC or the Republican Party or certainly to the President of the United States. Right now, since there's only one suspect in custody, he may be a lone wolf. And again, the number, I believe, is 12 packages containing pipe bombs or possible pipe bombs. We don't know how many more he could have sent. Tiffany, Mark? Todd, and that is so important to underscore that fact. And you just talked about the van again. And just so you know, Todd, because we do have uh, aerial video of that van, it does look as if it has arrived at the investigative facility. Uh, it has stopped. They are starting the process to slowly uh, dismantle the van from the flatbed there of that truck. And Todd, one of the things you mentioned when you were mentioning all the different high profile critics of the president uh, who were the targets of these mail bombs, we did uh, not too long ago hear from Robert De Niro, who um, also was the recipient of one of those mail bombs. And he said, quote, this morning, I thank God no one's been hurt. And I thank the brave and resourceful security and law enforcement people for protecting us. There's something more powerful than bombs. And that is your vote. People must vote. Uh, this is the first that we're hearing from the Hollywood actor after receiving uh, one of those mail bombs. And it, the other thing that we heard this morning, Todd, was from uh, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who talked a little bit about how emotional it was for her staff to be on the receiving end of that. And we can only imagine for everyone uh, who was on the receiving end of these mail bombs just yeah. how scary it must have been and thank goodness that nobody was hurt something that you alluded to not too long ago Todd 
Well, you know, and Tiffany, it's interesting because when this first started, the first thing I thought of was the anthrax scare uh, back in the early 2000s. Now, during that scare, as you know, anthrax was sent in envelopes, if people don't remember the story, sent to various news organizations. We had, I was working at WCBS-TV in New York at the time uh, on the same floor in the same building as CBS News, and we had people who were subjected to direct contact with anthrax during those attacks. We've had, since that time, we've had uh, uh, ricin attacks, we've had attempted ricin attacks. There were those uh, ricin packages or alleged ricin sent to Senate office buildings as well during that time. Uh, it is a frightening thing for anybody to think that through the U.S. mail, an attack could be made and lives could be taken. When, when I think about the fact that someone could have built, whether it's Caesar Sayoff Jr., whoever did this, put these explosives together and perhaps not knowing exactly how they would work, this could have happened at any time. There could have been an explosion. There could have been something that jarred one of those explosives if they're filled with black powder and something could have ignited and it could have killed so many people all those postal workers as well as law enforcement people handling the mail and of course the addressees themselves again today the story will be this man this suspect we'll hear more about in less than two hours now and what the FBI believes he did and how he did it. The connection here to the auto zone. Did he make purchases here to buy his supplies to make these pipe bombs? We know he was taken uh, into custody here by federal authorities, by the FBI. As you mentioned, now his van has arrived in Myanmar, uh, FBI headquarters there. But at the same time, that's the discussion today. There will be another discussion about political correctness, about divisive language, about who's to blame. It's important to note, right now we know this man acted alone. And we don't know all his motives. There is that connection among those who are the addressees of these weaponized uh, pipes. But at the same time, we don't know the whole story. Uh, Mr. De Niro, Robert De Niro, has talked about voting and politics. But today, it's about an act of domestic terrorism uh, that has a direct link to a man who walked into this store today. And again, the FBI has a lot more to explain and obviously a lot more evidence to gather. But there's so much physical evidence in that van, on those envelopes, in those packages, on the actual explosive devices themselves that you can bet the arrest today, and they tracked him with his cell phone and tracked him here to the store as well, you can bet they already have a lot of evidence piled up. Todd, we, we have brand new pictures just coming into our newsroom showing inside that, that AutoZone store right behind you there. It's showing uh, the FBI agents, it's a still picture for you, the FBI agents there at work. Uh, clearly, they're they're right at, at the cash register. Uh, we, we could assume going through some of the files there to see what could potentially be be evidence in this case as as Todd was was talking about of course when you go into a lot of stores nowadays they, they take your your cell phone mm -hmm. number and emails and a lot of your information and and we do know it to be the case that it was the cell phone that ended up helping lead authorities to Cesar Sayoc and I, I have to agree with Todd when he mentioned uh, the the AMI um, the anthrax mm -hmm. attacks that happened one week after September 11th that the first attack happened here in Palm Beach County, in Boca Raton, at the AMI building. Robert Stevens was the first person to receive one of those anthrax letters and died several days later because of the exposure to anthrax. And it was a total of five people who died in those anthrax attacks. So uh, that is one of the same things that first came to my mind when all of these mail bombs uh, started arriving at these uh, high-profile critics of the president. We want to go now to Angela, is that we correct? We have Angela Rosier. She's, in, uh, she's live in Opelaka for us this afternoon. Angela, you're at one of these mail sources facilities truly it it is appearing that this one is the the epicenter of this entire investigation that's right as a matter of fact we received an email a few moments ago from local FBI individuals telling us that additional information will be released during that 2:30 news conference this afternoon about what exactly took place in this facility here behind me the Opalaka mailing facility just off the Gratney here as we heard earlier according to the FBI that this facility may very well be connected to um, the person who authorities have in custody now that sent several potential bombs to prominent Democrats and the CNN office in New York and according to investigators several of those packages went through this US 
postal facility here in Opelaka. Um, officials were here last night, here last night after getting reports of a possible facility being a, a possible item being discovered here. Then Miami-Dade police here also assisting with FBI officials. We have seen postal trucks going back and forth here at the, at the facility, indicating to us that it appears that they are still business uh, as usual somewhat here today at the Opelaka facility. But we did hear the uh, president talking earlier today, praising law enforcement officers, law enforcement officers everywhere here, as well as in Washington coming together and um, finding a suspect in this case. Again, we'll be waiting for that 2.30 news conference to get more details about exactly what took place here in this facility so close to home. Back to you. Well, Angela, in terms of employees coming and going um, and any members of the public, I mean, what is, what's the status there at that mailing facility? Well, we have seen, as I said, some of the semi-truck uh, UPS trucks going back and forth to the back of the facility here. It's pretty huge. It's about the size of two, maybe three football fields. We have seen some folks dressed in what they use, um, their postal service uniforms in the cars going in the front door, the front entrance here earlier today, uh, which appears that everyone showed up for work today. Um, I was told that last night there was some sort of a fire alarm and folks exited the building for a time. But for now, it looks like everyone is back inside, I guess, uh, trying to get back to to work uh, but again um, doesn't appear to be uh, any um, problems going on right now uh, there's no access uh, closed to regular employees right now except for the media where you were outside the facility but for now uh, we haven't seen any FBI agents or any other police officers at this time but as I said this is a very large facility it's kind of hard to get a grasp from from the, the view on the ground right now all right Angela thank you and we are hearing from the Associated Press uh, that the overnight search that was happening there at that facility lasted until 4 a.m. this morning. So maybe perhaps once they found those additional uh, explosive devices, uh, they felt like maybe they had exhausted everything that they had there and that's maybe when they moved on to the suspect where they found later in the morning. We also have a little bit of new information uh, on the suspect and a prior record. We understand in 2015, uh, the suspect tried to steal luggage from a Walmart right on 45th Street mm -hmm. in, in West Palm Beach. So certainly a close connection. But but we understand was living in Aventura at the time. Value of that, that $58, but just given a notice at the time to appear in court. We want to go uh, back out live to that auto zone. Uh, anchor Tom McDermott out live there. Todd. Mark, uh, you mentioned Aventura, and I think important to note there, uh, Cesar Sag Jr., age 56, uh, his address is listed in Aventura. At the same time, uh, important to note, there is still speculation on this van, whether it's his, because it hasn't been confirmed it was definitely his. But it is a very unusual van, a white van with a, a bunch of political stickers on it, many uh, pro-President Trump stickers, uh, CNN stickers, uh, anything. It was, as Tiffany mentioned, covered in it. Neighbors in a Sayoc's neighborhood have been telling federal officials apparently that they are aware of a van that looked like that in the neighborhood. We're closer to confirming now, is all I'm saying, that this indeed is his van, what he drove around in. There are also some reports out there that uh, among the other uh, brushes with the law, and there are many this man has on his record, there have been previous threats to perhaps use a bomb. I want to stress again that there'll be a lot of talk about politics today. Um, as a journalist, as a reporter, um, as somebody who just moderated uh, that debate the other night, this is not really about politics today. It is about domestic terrorism. This man will have uh, motives that hopefully the FBI will be able to glean from him, perhaps pretty directly, now that I am sure they're interrogating him. He's been in custody for several hours now. But at the same time, this, as far as we know right now, one man acting alone. And I will say this. Not a sophisticated operation. The reason they were against searching the Opelaka mail facilities because it, apparently he was just going and it, mailing these and they were going through the Opelaka facility. Not a good way to cover your tracks. This isn't a sophisticated operation. It's still terrorism. It's still domestic terrorism. That's what you have to call it. But this does not appear to be uh, 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 something that was done with a lot of thought, 
a lot of pre-planning. Mostly this man had to gather addresses, some of which were wrong, some of which were spelled wrong. And of course, as you know, uh, Congresswoman Debbie Washman Schultz's Sunrise offices was the return address on these as well. And that was obviously meant to attack her as part of this whole operation. But again, one man in custody for now, really looking forward to that news conference by federal investigators to come here at 2.30. And I want to, because I've been standing in front of the camera, I will walk out of the way for a second so you can again see. And what you're seeing really now is the gaggle of reporters uh, who are surrounding that entrance right now. We know the FBI is still inside. And as we've been telling you, their point of emphasis is surveillance video in the store and AutoZone's records, their cash register records, their computerized records of any purchases that Cesar Sayak Jr. would have previously made, perhaps what he was making today. And something comes to mind in all this, if he has done business before, which we believe he has since they were looking in the register and continued to do so into the, um, the registration of all his possible purchases, he may have been buying more supplies today. I mentioned earlier the PVC pipe, hard to track down because it is so prevalent in stores. You can buy it almost anywhere. I believe you can buy it in uh, Walmart. You can buy it in a Target. You can buy it in a hardware store. There may be some grocery stores, large supermarkets, where you can buy a piece of PVC pipe, certainly a Home Depot. So that's hard to track down. But if he actually chose this store to make all his purchases, it actually makes this case a lot stronger and makes it a lot easier for federal investigators, for the FBI, who, let's comment now, this started early in the week. Here we are Friday. They have a man in custody. That is quick work. And you heard some of the applause when President Trump announced in the East Room that a man had been brought into custody, was under arrest in connection with this, and he is a suspect in the crime. That is quick work by the FBI. The big question is how many more packages could be out there? We don't know how prolific this man was, if indeed he's the one who sent the packages, but for all we know, there could be dozens more. But they certainly have turned up in rapid succession. As you know, uh, Cory Booker, the senator from New Jersey, uh, who has been a critic of the president as well and was um, front and center during the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee, now Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, he may have drawn the ire of this man with some of his statements made during those hearings. We don't know. We, we, it'll be hard to really glean exactly what set this man off to do this. We do know there is that connection, though, that as it s sounds now, so far, the targets are Democrats, and some of them, most of them, very high-profile critics of President Donald Trump. I want to go back to you, uh, Tiffany and Mark, just for a second. We're going to regroup here and see if there's any more new information we can gather. I'm not going to walk away. I'm right here, but um, I'll, let me send it back to you for just a moment. All right, Todd, I first have to say excellent job reporting there. You just got on the scene within an hour uh, of all of this happening and confirmed for us the name of, of, of the suspect. Of and we're going to stay on here. Here again is the suspect in connection with these mail bombs is Cesar Sayok. He's 56 years old. He's from Aventura. He was previously arrested uh, for uh, stealing luggage from the 45th Street Walmart. He also has uh, other arrest records. One in Hollywood dating back to 2014 for stealing copper piping and also uh, we're hearing that authorities had his fingerprints in the system because of that 2014 arrest. Uh, we also understand that van which we can't confirm just yet is definitively connected to him but we understand that uh, federal authorities have taken that van we saw the pictures of it going from the auto zone to a uh, federal uh, center there where it can be investigated looked at further of course covered uh, in very many stickers and political logos on it everything from derogatory comments about CNN to uh, stickers of, of even the president in the last hour we also heard from President Donald Trump um, who of course has clashed in the past with uh, federal authorities but this afternoon afternoon praising the work that they did as Todd McDermott mentioned here we are Monday the very first mailing and here we are already at the end of the week and we have a man in custody the president calling the acts despicable also saying that we will never allow political violence to take root in our country we are waiting for a 230 news conference by the Department of Justice we will be carrying that live here on WPBF 25 news as well as on air and we will be updating you hourly 
on this very quickly developing story here in South Florida. We could very well be hearing the Attorney General speak at the uh, Department of Justice news conference later on today. Uh, we do, I think, have some live pictures back at that at that auto zone. Well, we're going to go to those in uh, just a second. But what an interesting morning it has been in the last two hours. I think we came in this morning with two more targets of the of these pipe bombs, and then just within hours, we, we actually had this this arrest. And the the total number now of pipe bombs that were made crudely made uh, were 12 sent across the country uh, to high profile critics of President Donald Trump, uh, the Obamas, the Clintons, beginning with uh, the billionaire George Soros, mm -hmm. um, all the way to um, Hollywood actor uh, Robert De Niro, as well as Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who we were speaking earlier about just how emotional it was for her.